Students set to hold a March for Our Lives rally in Washington, D.C. and other cities across the country tomorrow as they push for stricter gun laws in the wake of the recent school shooting. Joining us now is the, a survivor of the Parkland school shooting, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, Jr., Kyle Kashuv. Kyle, good to see you. Thanks very much Thank for joining for us again. On. Good. You will not be attending that march. Why not? I'm going to be too busy meeting with legislators and pushing for actual change. Okay. Uh, do you not see it as important to be to be there with, with, with your classmates and others? Well, I think it's definitely amazing that they can march, but if, I mean, I'm, I'm taking the fast track to actually pushing a change because I really don't want to see Parkland ever happen again. And I could march, but I think my time would be much better well spent meeting with legislators. Good for you. Kyle, how do your classmates respond to this? I mean, you're spending some time with them, but you're not doing a lot of the important things that they're doing. Are they pushing back hard against this? Do they welcome the fact that you're taking an alternative viewpoint? How are they responding? I mean, there he is in the White House with the president, yeah. with the first lady. This That's is what he's doing. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm just curious how they respond to that. Well, a lot of them view what they're doing as more productive and effective than meeting with legislators, which I disagree with. I think that meeting firsthand with legislators and trying to explain to them your point of view and to explain to them what's necessary and what needs to be done is more important than walking down to Washington, D.C., and which is fine that we have a different point of opinion. But I truly believe that if you want change, you go to the legislators. Kyle, quick question. What percentage of your classmates are actually marching? Uh, I, I don't know that percentage, but I would give you a... a most likely 90 plus percent of all my peers would be marching whether in Parkland or Washington DC. Now of the uh, so you got a large percentage of your classmates marching. I, do you think there's certainly I mean I remember my days from high school. You think most of this are really just viewing the march as a just a way to goof off or do you think they're really serious? I mean I think there are definitely some people who are coming seriously but a lot of people saw that um, that you could get a free four day trip to Washington DC. Exactly. And why not? Right. Yeah. Let me ask you, because we, we see this Time Magazine cover, several of your classmates are on the latest cover of uh, Time, uh, titled Enough. You were not in this picture uh, uh -huh. on the cover of Time Magazine. Uh, did they ask you to be in the shot? Well, they didn't ask me, but honestly, I didn't know Time Magazine was still a thing. Um, <laughs> I, no, I wasn't asked. No. Well, why, why do you think that is? Um, I don't, maybe, I think maybe they were trying to represent only one point of view, the Democrat point of view and the, the anti-gun, the, the anti-gun, yeah. um, a movement. Um, I honestly couldn't tell you because if they were really trying to get the full perspective, they would ask me and especially Patrick Petty. Yeah, I'm wondering if you are in fact seeing pushback because you take a different view, a more conservative view on, on this topic. I mean, I know that you had a recent incident with Spirit Airlines. You tweeted about it. Uh, we're going to show your tweet right here, Kyle. You say, just landed in Baltimore on Spirit Airlines, and the stewardess felt compelled to give us all a speech about the March for Our Lives, which openly says on the petition are trying to categorically ban AR-15s and made everyone clap. Can anything just be non-political anymore? Spirit tweeted an apology after your tweet. And Spirit Airlines said, while we appreciate that one team members, uh, our team members are individuals, we don't believe politics should be part of the guest experience. We are looking into the incident. We apologize to any guests offended by these comments. Is this apology enough for you, Kyle? I mean, I, wanted, I wasn't offended to begin with. I just thought the, what they were doing was, um, was stupid and just unnecessary, that they're giving a speech um, for all the passengers how much they support the march. I just thought it was unnecessary. But, but go back and talk to us about your views here, because this is the whole crux of the story. I mean, the fact that you've taken a different position, you're not looking for you know, specific, you know, an impact on the Second Amendment. You, you, you say that there are rules in place that should have been followed and there were missed signals. Where are you on this? Tell us why you think you're seeing some pushback against your views. Well, I think I'm definitely getting some pushback because I'm not taking, like, the mass majority opinion on this, which is everyone's just following each other and spiraling in a loop of talking points. Um, I mean, I've, I've taken a step back and I've looked at all the facts, and I've come to the conclusion that, what I think I'm doing right now is what needs to be done versus just marching and, and, um, and screaming about gun control. Right. Kyle, it's Dagan McDowell. Have you met with both Democrats and Republican lawmakers? Yeah, across the board. And where do you see consensus among them in terms of tightening gun regulations? We have gun regulations in this country. Or where do you think that they can all come together and do something? Again, fix NICS was kind of easy, uh, closing some of the loopholes or trying to tighten up the background check database. 
Well, I think firsthand, every legislator I talk to across the board, they truly care and they don't want to see this happen. They really do. They, do, they don't want to see this ever happen to any of their constituents ever again. Um, what I think that every single lawmaker agreed on was that um, they want to see that people who are mentally disturbed can't acquire a weapon, and they want to make sure that our background check system is actually being implemented and all the information is going through. They want to see the clear reporting and the full reporting of information of um, disturbed individuals. Yeah, I mean, there are some changes happening to your school right now in terms of security. Let's talk about that for a second, yeah. Kyle. The superintendent says that students are now going to be required to use clear backpacks and metal detectors may be installed. Do you agree with these moves? What about this clear backpack? I mean, I honestly think that if it's going to protect our schools and if this is what determined that is absolutely necessary to make sure this won't happen again, then we shouldn't be opposed to it. We should be in favor of it. Yes, it'll be a little bit of discomfort, but look, that's the price you pay for going to school safely. I mean, I would prefer that I could come to school safely, not have to fear if that meant having a clear backpack. Okay, and, and the metal detectors you're also comfortable with. I mean, you have said in the past that what's wrong with having an armed guard at the school, right? Yeah, I mean, let's do everything possible to make sure school is safe. Yeah, it might cause some discomfort. For some kids, we might have to wait a few minutes to get to the metal detectors, hopefully not three hours, okay. but that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Kyle, thanks so much for weighing in this morning. Good to see you again. Thank you. Kyle Kashuv joining us there.